My question, sister, is found in Joel one ten and eleven. Joel one ten eleven. You may read, brother. The field is wasted; the land mourns, for the grain is ruined. The new wine is dried up; the oil fails. Be ashamed, you farmers! Wail, you vine dressers! For the wheat and the barley, because the harvest of the field has perished. We know, sister, that the harvest is the gospel. What does it mean that the harvest of the field has perished? Could you please explain this verse to us, sister? Thank you, and may God continue blessing you. Thank you. Well, here in verse one, the Lord sends Joel to send a message to the people of Israel. The people of Israel were already during their last few times before they were exterminated as the people of God, the holy nation or that holy land. As those who were privileged by God, they were at the brink of losing this title. But the Lord sent Joel with another message that they also did not understand. This is why he would say, he says here in verse four, it says what the chewing or rather verse two, hear this, you elders and give ear all you inhabitants of the land, meaning the people of Israel. Has anything like this happened in your days or even in the days of your fathers? Tell your children about it. Let your children tell their children and their children and another generation. What the chewing locust left, the swarming locust has eaten. What the swarming locust left, the crawling locust has eaten. Meaning, a nation came and destroyed the Israelites and what remained? Well, then it was destroyed by another nation and the little that remained, another nation came and destroyed it. And the very last things that remained, then the king of Babylon came and he was the last king who came and destroyed Jerusalem. This is what we call that the locust, the crawling locust, the swarming locust, well, it ate what had been left. And we can say this locust was the king of Babylon with all of his armies that came and sieged over the people of Israel and destroyed everything. This is what we know from the history in Kings and in Chronicles. So this is what the Lord said to them, that what was left over is what the other nations came and attacked them. And then lastly, as we know, the Babylonians came, King Nebuchadnezzar came And we know that this was the consuming locust. This was the last one. So the Lord tells Joel, tell them, tell the people of Israel, awake, you drunkards and weep and wail all you drinkers of wine because of the new wine, for it has been cut off from your mouth. So the Lord was telling them the day is coming where you will have nothing to drink or to eat. For a nation has come up against my land, strong and without number, meaning Babylon, the armies of Babylon. His teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he has the fangs of a fierce lion. He has laid waste of my vine. Now, that vine was Jerusalem and ruined my fig tree, and that was Jerusalem as well. He has stripped it bare and thrown it away. Its branches are made white, meaning He destroyed Jerusalem, the temple, and the palaces of the kings, and David and Solomon, and with all of the buildings that had been built in Jerusalem, those were the branches. And it says here, lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth, and this was Jerusalem. The Lord viewed her as his wife, and he the husband. He says, girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. The grain offering and the drink offering have been cut off from the house of the Lord because at this point they had destroyed the temple that King Solomon built. It was burnt down. They took away all of the elements of gold and silver, all of the precious metals they took to Babylon and everything that remained, all the wood was burnt. So in verse nine, the grain offering and the drink offering have been cut off from the house of the Lord. Yes, because it burnt down, well, then no one is going to be able to carry out the sacrifices. It says the priests mourn who minister to the Lord. The field is wasted. The land mourns for the grain is ruined. And what was the grain? Well, it was the city of Jerusalem and those who dwelled there, the prophets, the priests, all of those people. It says the new wine is dried up, the oil fails. This is all the same, the blessings of God. God was no longer giving them blessings, so they lost that oil. Be ashamed, you farmers. Wail, you vine dressers, for the wheat and the barley, because the harvest of the field has perished. Now, this was physical and spiritually. They had lost it all because they no longer had anything to eat, and God also was no longer with them. So all of this was physical and spiritual. 
The vine has dried up. Now that it was that physical vine, there were no longer any grapes and spiritually it was Jerusalem. And the fig tree has withered, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, all the trees of the field are withered. Surely joy has withered away from the sons of men. So we shouldn't even continue reading because it, it is the Lord speaking to the people of Israel of all the things that he was taking away from them because of their disobedience and they were led captives. And that was the remnant that the Lord had kept preserved because through this remnant, Jesus Christ needed to come through. So he did have mercy of this remnant, but everyone else perished. They perished. The principalities, the governors, the kings, they died. And only the poor of Israel, the poor people out in the fields were those who remained alive. Those who had no importance, they had no voice or say or value. They were the ones that remained. So this is what the Lord is speaking of. It's symbolic and also physical in that time. Very well, let's continue. This book of Joel is so beautiful. I advise you read it. 